Good morning from China. At least it's, uh, again, morning uh, as I'm recording this. Here in a little bit, I'm going to uh, to get in the car and go into town, and we'll have another look to see if they've uh, opened things back up. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Yesterday, they had a bunch of little shops and everything open, but not the supermarket. Today, I'm hoping the supermarket is open, and, well, maybe they've uh, they've removed all the roadblocks up there by the county road. We'll find out either way. Now, I'm not sure if you can hear the uh, the town loudspeaker thing going in the background again. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know about the loudspeaker. Now, I know I always talk about uh, the announcements and things that it talks about on there or whatever, but uh, there's a little bit more. There's actually a little bit of theater that goes on with that uh, that loudspeaker. Of course, my Chinese is terrible, so I can't follow it very well, but uh, the way it works, I guess... A long time ago, before communism, they used to have people that would wander around. I say wander. They'd go from different, you know, like town to town or city to city, and they'd be uh, street performers. They'd tell stories or whatever. And so at certain times of the day, they have some of those kinds of stories come over that loudspeaker as well. So it's not all just annoying announcements. Sometimes it's annoying stories. <laughs> it's just a little too loud. It'd be nice if it was on the TV or a radio and I could just turn it on when I wanted or turn it off when I wanted. But out here, I guess they put that on there. It's for uh, the old people living out here. They can probably remember back, some of them anyway, back before when that sort of thing was common. Of course, uh, during the Cultural Revolution, that became impossible because people couldn't really leave their uh, their towns. So, yeah, all of that stopped kind of a sad thing which reminds me there's actually a uh, movie about a performer like that that i'd recommend anybody to watch if you want to learn some things about chinese culture it's also a very touching film it's called the king of masks and it's an old one it's not the uh there i think there might be a new one or a tv show or something by the same name but remember it's the old one it's not uh not that old but um definitely something worth watching if you if you are interested in Chinese culture, that is. I'm guessing you've noticed that the weather has changed again. I was expecting it to rain yesterday, but it seems that it's kind of held off. It's uh, threatening to rain today, if you can tell. It's very uh, very cloudy, a little bit of fog, and I'm expecting it's going to rain. It's a bit colder too. It's not uh, not nice and warm like yesterday, but. Um, yeah, it looks like it's going to cool off gradually over the next week. And I guess hopefully it comes back up again at some point. I'm tired of the cold, so I'm really looking forward to the uh, the warm air. Now, as far as coronavirus updates, um, the numbers have continued to drop. There's a lot of provinces that aren't reporting any new cases, which, if you believe it, I mean, that's good news. Uh, I hope that's true, because... Well, like I said, there uh, a lot of places are opening back up. Some of the little places are still reluctant to uh, go along with what the government is saying to do. But it sounds like for the most part, the country is opening back up and the things are starting to kind of go back to normal. Of course, nobody's going to restaurants or anything like that, but that's understandable. <laughs> why would Why would you gather? I mean, most people, they're not really confident in those numbers that so they're not going to be going to restaurants or shopping malls, not unless they absolutely have to. Now, I am hearing the uh, the cases in South Korea, they have, uh, well, they're up to, I guess, around 900. So, And I, I don't think that they're going to be able to track all of those people and who they've had contact with. And this thing is so contagious that I think pretty much anybody that they've come in contact with is probably going to be infected with the virus whether they know it or not and those people are going to be going around spreading it to everybody they come in contact with it's just well that that sounds like it's already out of control uh just very unfortunate and also hearing more and more about what's happening in europe i'm afraid this it's just gonna spread out of control and I hope, I'm, I'm sure, well, I say I'm sure, I don't know. Sometimes governments are a little bit slow at preparing things, and 
the best thing they could do at this point since there's no way of really containing the virus. I know that in Italy they've uh, quarantined a couple of cities. But to be honest, the best thing they can do is get a lot of oxygen tanks and, you know, fever medicine to try and bring fevers down. So, because, you know, they've got to now focus on the most severe cases. Most of the time, people are going to have, you know, basically a flu. It's the ones that get this viral pneumonia thing that are going to be the biggest problem. So hopefully, hopefully the government where you're at is preparing by getting oxygen tanks and anti-fever medications. Because, I don't know, as well as probably antibiotics just in case there's, you know, secondary infection of some kind. The antibiotics won't do anything for the virus, obviously, but... Well, hopefully they're getting oxygen, because that's what people need in order to get through this. Uh, without that, the people with severe cases probably won't make it. And I'm not trying to say that to scare anybody. I just am saying I hope that, you know, people are... The government is doing something like that. Um, I'm sure in the United States, I, I, I don't know what they're doing. Because it's really, you know, like there's the federal government and then there's, you know, every level of government is kind of its own thing. So they don't necessarily answer to anybody, um, which really is a good thing. In my, I'm not going to get into that, but hopefully at every level they're, they're trying to prepare. I've heard the military is preparing, which I mentioned in another video. I don't know what the military is going to do to stop it. Uh, besides roll in and force people to stay at home like they did here. Uh, hopefully it doesn't come to that. There's not as many cases in the United States. And so that you can feel a little comforted, because I saw some people are worried that the U.S. government is lying or the CDC is lying. Keep in mind the way that the U.S. government works. The, uh, the local government where you are uh, is not, you know, they don't have to answer to the federal government. I mean, they have rules that they have to follow, but... They're, you know, they have to answer to you, so they're not, they're not as likely to lie to you about what's going on. If there's cases in Michigan, which I've heard there's a lot, then, uh, and, oh, sorry, don't get scared if you're in Michigan. A lot relative, you know, relatively, I, I don't even know the number, don't, never mind that part. But, uh, you know, they're not going to lie to you. If they say there's, a, you know, this many cases, I think you can pretty much trust it. Um, your, like I said, your local government is not going to be inclined to lie to you because the federal government tells them to. That's just not going to happen. So don't worry too much. Um, hopefully, I mean, they did take steps to keep people from traveling through here. Now the only problem is that, you know, with South Korea and Japan and these other places being infected, then those places weren't restricted for travel. So now, now they're putting up travel warnings, but... It might be too late for that, so I guess we have to wait and see. But when you see the numbers coming out over there, I think you can probably, for the most part, trust it. But just, you know, don't think like, oh, there's not that many and I don't need to worry. Still get prepared. Still have anti-fever medication and whatever types of medication that you need. You know, if you have a health condition, just make sure you have what you need. Make sure that you have food and water to last a little bit. And then... Uh, then you don't have to, I mean, I keep watching other videos just, just to be on the safe side. Now, before it starts raining on me, I think I'm going to go back and get in the car and we'll, uh, we'll head into town and see if anything has changed. I'm, I'm thinking at this point it probably, well, as I said last time, I, maybe I don't have that much confidence that the, uh, the town government has allowed the supermarkets to open up. We'll see. We're going to find out today. That'll be the big adventure for today. Now, as I'm walking back, I do want to say one thing, because I've seen a lot of uh, comments about the numbers in China being fake. Now, I want to draw your attention to the extreme measures that uh, the government took here. So if you've been watching the videos, you know I've been stuck here in this village for about a month now. Some of the time I did manage to get on the road at one point early on and go back to Danyang briefly, but essentially the entire country has been locked down. It's not just limited to here. It wasn't limited to, you know, certain areas. 
everybody was going through this. Um, I told you about my friend. They were allowed to go outside for a couple hours every two days. From and That's in the city. That's what they did to bring the numbers down. They literally just locked everybody up. The entire country was basically shut down all this time. And believe me, that does work because then you uh, you find the people that do have the infection and they hold them off to quarantine somewhere. And yeah, they uh, now it's open back up. So maybe I'm not saying for sure because you know I'm not there uh, hanging out in the uh, the government people's meetings, but um, some of those numbers might actually be accurate. Because they literally locked down the entire country for this entire time. Now, I also, just thinking about this from uh, an economic standpoint, most of, well, everything is made in Asia. I mean, if you think about uh, your iPhone is made in China. My, my phone that I have is made in, you know, well, parts of it are probably made in China, actually, in Vietnam, as well as, uh, I mean, it's a Korean phone. So I just imagine, you know, the places where a lot of the electronics come from and a lot of the world's stuff, basically everything, if they do start doing what China did and just start sealing places off and locking down their countries for long periods of time, uh, the, <laughs> there's going to be some serious economic damage, not just here in China, but all around the world. I mean, this virus, I don't know, I guess we'll have to see if it comes to that. Hopefully they, uh, well, I don't know that there's much hope of them getting it under control in uh, in Korea or Japan. I just don't know. We'll see. I, I, I don't think they're going to seal their country down or lock it down like they did here. But that is what they did to try and stop the spread of the virus. Just lock everybody in their houses. Tell them they can't come out. Can't come into the city, can't go out of the city. And if you do, then you're stuck on the freeway for until it opens back up. But uh, that's a possible thing that we're facing. You know, Europe, if Europe ends up going through this, I don't know what European countries will do, if they'll be able to lock their country down in the same way or not. But this is probably going to cause some economic damage everywhere. And not just because China was locked down and production stopped here, but because it might happen elsewhere. Let's hope not. Let's just hope not. Sorry, I got a little distracted. It's actually been a while. I uh, went back to the house and uh, ended up watching TV with my son. <laughs> but now we're on the road headed back into town. So we'll see if that supermarket is open and what's going on up there. See if the uh, roadblocks are still in place. I'm not overly confident that they have opened up the supermarket again yet. Um, I guess we'll see. You can see it's a very gloomy day today. It actually hasn't rained, but uh, yeah, things are pretty gloomy. Oh wow, I've got two farmers in front of me here. Usually I've never... <laughs> this. Uh, in one of my videos I mentioned that uh, they have these tractor things. I'll show you a picture of it here. There's a look at it from the front side. Not a very good picture. And that is precisely what is in front of me. It's like a, well, an engine with some wheels and they attach the, one of these trailers to it and they basically drive it like a horse buggy or something or a donkey cart. I, I don't know what you'd call this thing, but uh, it's pretty common here in uh, this part of the world. At least in China. I'm pretty sure they've got them in Southeast Asia too, but yeah. Yeah, I got a ride on one of these long ago. Now, as interesting as these little tractor things are, <laughs> it's not very fun to be stuck behind them. I'm still stuck behind them. They're not exactly high-speed vehicles, if you know what I mean. Although, I think it moves faster than that cart, which he is stuck behind, amazingly. This is uh, really quite a traffic jam here. Oh, there they go. Oh, I see. <laughs> what in the world? They're towing the thing. I see. He must have run out of gas. That or his engine seized up. No wonder it was going so slow. I was like, why are these guys following each other like this? Well, it's because the uh, the motor was dead for whatever reason on the tractor. So <laughs> there you go. Now we're moving a little faster toward town. 
see what's open and what's not open and yeah well here we go through town I know I'm speeding a little bit but uh, I should slow down I shouldn't be speeding around in the town you never know I don't want to get in an accident that would be a nightmare here uh, typically by the way when you get into an accident in China the uh, insurance works a little bit different than it does in the West so I pay out of pocket and then I have to you know get reimbursed by the insurance company and typically out of your pocket happens immediately so if I bump somebody's car then I better be ready to give them some money because yeah that's how it works uh, I've never hit anybody I've had my car get scuffed up a bit but it was when I wasn't watching and apparently from a scooter or something like that so I didn't get anything out of it and even if I had caught anybody oh look at this you can see uh, coming up here on my side the gas station is open that's a good sign maybe uh, Maybe the supermarket's open then. That's a good sign. Sorry, I wasn't recording, but yes, the supermarket is open. So let's go see if the uh, the other supermarket is open. <laughs> and, uh, things are opening up. That might mean that the roadblock is gone. I'm not... Uh, well, I feel a little more confident than it is now, now that I see that the supermarket is open. Let's see. Um, oh, that KTV is not open. I'm just looking to see what businesses are open. And you're probably hearing that. Yep, the other supermarket's open too. You're probably hearing me say that, you know, KTV. What in the world is a KTV? Is that an acronym? I don't know if it's an acronym, but uh, <laughs> I guess it is. It's a karaoke place. Now, in China, that's another thing I'm going to have to show you guys. Karaoke does not work the same as it does in the West. In China... You go and you uh, pay some money to have a little room. Sorry, I'm just trying to get turned around here. You go and you pay some money to have a little room with the big TV and lights and drinks and all that stuff with your friends in a private room. And you just kind of sing songs with your friends, I guess. I've been to it several times. I'm not like the karaoke king or something, but Chinese people love it. Japanese people love it. I'm assuming that Korean people probably also love it. Now let's go see the supermarket. But yeah, that's what... Oh, there's nowhere for me to park. Okay, maybe I'm not going to go to this one. I was hoping maybe this one would have some coffee in it, but... Uh, well, there's nowhere to park, so... I'm going to go to... Those, nah, I'm going to go to the other one. Bear with me here. We'll see what they've got going on inside now that they're officially opened and people aren't having to sneak into the store. <laughs> Ah, this is good. Things opening up. At least it's good in a way. I don't know that it's good if, you know, the virus starts spreading again, but hopefully they've managed to kill that possibility off by locking everybody up for a month. And again, sorry, I am distracted because there is an awful lot more traffic than there has been. Oh, as you can see, I'm trying to park here and this guy's... I'm going over there. Ah, sorry. Yep, he's trying to talk to his friend. I'm trying to park. Oh, yo. Hopefully nobody bothers me for parking here. Or parks right behind me. That's happened a number of times. Well, off we go to the market. Sorry. I'm going to make sure I don't get run over by a scooter. So I'm crossing the street to the supermarket. It's kind of nice not to have to sneak in here. They actually have the lights on. Here's an interesting one. Put this up here. I've never seen lays like this. That's. Are those supposed to be olives? I don't know. Huh, very strange. Here's another fun one. Get your uh, fruit flavored potato chips. Lay's potato chips. I don't think they have that uh, particular flavor in America. Here's another one. Grilled squid flavor. It actually tastes okay. Here's my favorite that I wish they had in America. This is roasted chicken flavor. Roasted chicken wing flavor. I'm sorry. But quite good. Very good. Now the unfortunate thing is there is no coffee that I'm finding. They do have this though. You might find it interesting. Red Bull. Chinese Red Bull. Tastes very different from American Red Bull. Oops, sorry. Crossing the road. So... 
the Red Bull. I never ever drink that stuff here. I had to, my first experience was bad enough. That's just me. Uh, maybe you would like non-carbonated Red Bull, but I don't. So in the United States, I don't know. I never really got any Red Bull when I was in Europe. Um, it's carbonated, so it's got fizz, you know, here it doesn't. So the first time I had it, I was, uh, I was going on a long hike and I had some and I thought, all right, you know, I've never really liked the taste of Red Bull to begin with, but it's something and it gives you energy. So anyway, I got it, opened it up, went to drink it and <laughs> it's just as flat as can be. It tastes like Red Bull, but without any carbonation, like I said. All right, I guess uh, let's go see if this place has coffee or what they've got inside. I haven't been in this one, uh, well, since this whole thing started and they closed everything. Well, let me rephrase that. I haven't been here since they closed it down. Anyway, it's been a few weeks. Let's see if they've still got coffee in here. Oh, guys, look at this. Coffee. It's a hit. I think this particular market stayed closed the whole time, so they still have all of their stuff. Which means there might be a selection of coffee up here. Yep, we've got all the cheap coffee. You can see it behind me. <laughs> it's less than a dollar. It might not really be coffee, I don't know. The canned stuff, as you can see. Whatever that is. I guess it's coffee. That one's a name brand, so it probably really is coffee. Huge selection of Chinese energy drinks and the Red Bull again. I think I'm gonna go for this mocha. <laughs> mocha water i don't know Ugh. coffee water stuff flavored water mocha water we'll call it mocha water managed to find some of that some chips supermarkets are open looking pretty good so far let's see if that roadblock is still up well i've seen trucks coming in and cars um hmm. it looks open I don't see the little building. Oh, there's the little building. Now let's see if there's anybody in it this time. I don't see the signs. I don't see the guys. Hey, look at that. It's completely open. Except for, of course, they've got their little building thing blocking the way. Who knows when they're going to haul that off. But <laughs> you can get out. We can go without having to worry about not getting back in. What a wonderful day. You know, it's funny. Uh, the first time I ever came here, I actually came here on a bus and this is exactly where it dropped me off and the little uh wooden uh i don't know what you'd call it covered area it's still there it's still there to this day i can remember sitting under there waiting uh to catch a bus to go back out too very uh very interesting the um what was it then oh yeah i got this drink there and um, i just wanted something cold so they gave me something cold but it was like a how would you even describe it? It was like a green tea drink with... Have you ever had Gushers? If you've ever had Gushers, the candy, that's kind of old. I don't even know if they still have Gushers. It's like this um, fruit candy, and if you bite into it, it has all this juice stuff on the inside, but it's kind of like uh, thicker than juice. I don't know. <laughs> but that's what it... You know, they had some kind of little uh, things in the green tea drink, and when you bit them it was like that except with thick green tea flavored stuff it wasn't the best drink I've ever had I, I actually really really hated it to me it tasted like um, grass water with honey and weird pouches of goop I don't know how to describe it it wasn't good um, I've not seen that uh, in a long time maybe other people didn't think it was good either there's the bullet train tracks that I'm driving underneath now. Very, uh, very convenient, by the way. If you ever come to China. I mean, uh, oh, it'll be so great when this virus nightmare is over. I highly recommend, despite anything you've heard about China, I highly recommend coming to visit. There's just so many things that you should see. The culture, you know... It hasn't completely been destroyed by uh, communism, and I, I shouldn't say that. I'm being mean. I, I'm always being mean, but 
the uh, the cultural side of things is just very different. Uh, it's like coming to a completely different world. And, um, you know, of course, people are the same everywhere you go, but uh, the way that they do things, the, the way the language works, the food, it's just a very interesting thing to see. And, of course, uh, scenery-wise, there are some places here that you can't see anywhere else in the world. So certainly come here, and I'm, I'm very much looking forward to going back to making normal videos, highlighting these kinds of things, and uh, just talking about everyday life here in China instead of everyday life under quarantine. So if you can tell, I'm very glad to see that the roads are opening up, and <laughs> just, like I say, I, I'm very much looking forward to just making normal videos again. No more of this uh, nightmare apocalypse uh, zombie apocalypse type stuff. <laughs> this is good. This is really good news. Of course, I'm probably going to be wearing a mask everywhere I go for the next long time because, well, I, I don't want to get sick with the coronavirus. I mean, uh, who knows though? If you remember uh, way back at the beginning of this, <laughs> I got a little bit sick or I worried everybody with a very slight fever. Who knows? For all I know, that was the coronavirus. <laughs> I just don't know. But um, I, I don't think it was the coronavirus. I didn't end up with any uh, respiratory problems. And, but who knows, you know? Like I say, there's so little information about what this actually does. Uh, I just don't know. Apparently that doesn't mean you're, you know, immune from it after having gotten it. Because I've heard of cases where people get it again after getting better. So, And then relapse and all kinds of stuff. So I'm still going to show a lot of precautions. I'm going to be wearing my mask for quite a while now. In fact, I think that they require you to wear a mask anyway. I saw advertisements from uh, some of the malls back where I normally live saying, you know, they're opened up again, but you have to wear a mask to come inside. So, and of course, who wouldn't, you know, in this, well, I guess I've seen plenty of people out without masks, but in, in your right mind, who would be going out in this place without a mask, you know? The, uh, the nightmare, everybody's just talking about the coronavirus. Everybody knows, you know, even though they uh, try to snuff it all out, the, the rumors still are flying about, you know, what's happening in Wuhan. And believe me, I'm going to be wearing a mask in public for the next, uh, at least the next several months until this thing is for sure gone. Of course, also now that things are opening up, I, I like to talk about how I'd love to just take a vacation and get away from all this stuff. But, uh, you know, to be honest, I've been... Uh, my business has been neglected quite long enough. I'm gonna have to make a couple of trips, at least, just to, just to get things going again. Um, I'm glad that I, uh, a long time ago, I had an opportunity to open a brick and mortar shop, which I still might do, just because, but I decided to start doing things online and to sell to the shops. Now, the, uh, the brick and mortar shops, I, I imagine that sales are probably going to be quite down on that end. I'm probably not going to be making a lot of money selling to them, but uh, online shops, I think they're going to take off. <laughs> People are going to need to buy things still, and nobody wants to go to the store, as at least not as much as they can, or you know what I mean. They're, they're going to be avoiding it, so online business, I think, is going to do quite well, and I need to be ready for that. So I need to make a couple of trips. And uh, hey, I'll take you guys along too on my my little journeys uh, here and there. We'll see. Um, I I don't want to go. Uh, I was thinking about going to Europe, but I'm starting to think that maybe I'm going to avoid Europe right now. That uh, I I mean I'm sorry. I'm not saying it in a bad way. Just the way the virus is just now starting to take off over there. I think they're going to be going through much of what we went through here. Only they're just at the beginning, and we're kind of coming to the end where things are opening up so I really don't want to find myself stuck in that situation again I mean I, I could survive in Europe for an extended period of time but I really don't want to have to do that I mean that sounds like it would get quite expensive after a little while uh, and in fact I know it would Europe is not the cheapest place to go. Parts of it can be pretty cheap. I'm not saying Europe is super expensive. I know a lot of people, they uh, go on vacations, you know, to Europe or different places and spend large amounts of money 
Uh, you don't have to do that, by the way. Europe is not necessarily the most expensive place in the world. Getting there might be expensive, but if you look for the right tickets, you can get there very cheap. And it can be cheaper to stay in Europe than it is to travel around in the United States, to be honest. I... I mean, but yeah, of course, if you want to go and experience, you know, five-star cuisine in France and in Italy and all these places, then of course it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. But, you know, if you just go and you eat at the places where regular people eat or you, you know, you, you can do it pretty cheap. Um, obviously, when I'm traveling on uh, business with my wife, we're, we're not out to, like, spend fortune on traveling. We've already done the vacation thing. <laughs> it's not a vacation, so... I'm not looking to go and spend a bunch of money. I'm already spending enough money uh, tracking down product to making, you know, large purchases over there to begin with. I, I don't need to be spending enormous amounts of money on food. But I also have to say, when I say my business, I don't mean my business because it's my wife and my, you know, it's our business. I, I should be saying our business. Sometimes she does more with it than I do. Uh, she's very good at that. She's very good at that sort of thing so don't get me wrong I like to say uh, my business but what I really mean is our business now somebody was mentioning that they have a factory uh, over in Guangdong province I think that I saw somewhere around Guangzhou and Shenzhen and they were asking uh, when uh, the workers were going to be going back to work out there now Shenzhen you know, basically Guangdong province it's uh, it's an amazing place, by the way, if you ever get a chance. It's one of the most built-up, you know, urban areas in the world. It's huge. They, you know, they have different cities like Guangzhou and Shenzhen, but it's really like, you know, one massive, massive city. But as far as the workers, it's my understanding that uh, the situation there is supposed to be getting better, and I expect that they're going to be going back to work with sometime within the next week the only problem that I see is that a lot of the workers that work in the factory is actually are from the uh, from Hubei province in Wuhan so I don't know when those workers are going to be able to go back um, out here in Anhui province they've been uh, taking workers from other fields to go work in the factories because the workers aren't able to come back a lot of them are in Wuhan but if you have factories out there, I think that they're probably going to be getting back to work within the next week. I'm sure they'll find some way to get people in there, uh, even if they have to take them from restaurants. I mean, obviously, nobody's uh, going to be... The, the, the business... Excuse me. The business at restaurants is not going to be at 100%, so those workers are available. And <laughs> but I have to think, how many of those people have actually been... I'm, I'm turning around here. I've driven a left on the, in this direction. Pretty soon I'm going to get a message from my wife like, Where are you? What are you doing? You've been gone forever. Come back and play with your son. He's driving me nuts. But uh, yeah, even those workers, I think a lot of them are probably from Hubei province. So that's going to cause some issues. And there are still other places too that are kind of locked down. Not, I mean, yeah, it's opening up pretty much, but it's not 100% of the country. They've kind of uh, divided places up into degrees of how serious the outbreak has been. And places like this area where it's not so severe, they have, you know, completely opened up, supposedly. But there are other parts of the country where they're not opening up so much. So I'd give it time. But until Hubei province is, you know, until then, that is opened up. I, I don't know. I think that the, uh, the workforce is going to be kind of affected, especially down in Guangdong province. But then again, you might get other people, you know. Maybe this is an opportunity for other people to go in and get work. Unfortunately, uh, at the expense of those people that are trapped in Hubei province. But we can all hope that sometime soon they're able to leave and get out of that nightmare because it really is it's a nightmare it's an absolute nightmare something that you know you can't even imagine in a movie you know well I, I guess you can imagine it in a movie but terrible terrible nonetheless and that's probably going to make for a pretty good video so I'll go ahead and end it here and we'll see you in the next one